Today I want to talk to you guys about the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically the new big update that was released today. Now this is version 1.00.05.00 and it is a long awaited update that brings a whole number of features that people have been desperate for. The first is that it finally gives us some HDMI output options and whilst it isn't from the goggles, it's from the smart controller, it is something that's now available. It also adds some changes on analog including the ability to see the goggles battery and they've also added the home point and gps data for using with a gps on your quad to display on the screen as well so what we're going to do is take a quick dive into this update i'm going to talk you through some of the changes show you a couple of things and just give you guys a little bit of an overview of what it's all about if you find this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel. There is a button in the bottom right hand corner of every video. Also, please don't forget to click the little bell and set this to all. That way you'll receive updates on any new videos that we do release in the future. Now before I jump into this update, please do make sure that when you update this, you do update all parts of your system. So you do need to make sure you update the goggles, the remote controller, as well as the ear end as well. And do make sure that your batteries are fully charged before you actually start, because the ear end especially does take a lot of power. So do make sure you've got your antennas on and it's getting a bit of airflow as well. Let's take a closer look at what the update actually brings. So taking a closer look at the release notes, as you see at the top and at center is the big one, which is added the ability to view HDMI live broadcast on connecting the goggles to the DJI smart controller. Now, just to explain this in detail, there is no HDMI output directly on the goggles themselves. You can now bind the goggles to the DJI smart controller for the Mavic and then display video out via that built-in HDMI port. Now, just to be clear, the smart controller will not replace the DJI FPV remote. The sticks do not control the system. It is simply a display pass-through device to allow you to get HDMI output. Now, whilst this isn't ideal for everyone, it does mean some people will be able to have HDMI output if they already own a smart controller or it is that important to them, they're willing to spend the five, six hundred dollars that it is to be able to get it. Here and now, if you don't have a smart controller and you don't want to buy one there is no other option it is simply only the smart controller output that is available today and as i've said it is only a display output you won't even have the ability to use it for controls now you will need to do an update on the smart controller as well and i believe it's version 1.00.0700 that is going to be released to allow it to support it isn't quite here today but it will be available in the very near future now looking at the rest of the release notes the next big one that they've added is the ability for more on-screen display information and you've now finally got home point direction, home point distance, altitude and GPS speed when using it with either Betaflight or iNav with a GPS connected and this is a big one for fixed wing users especially that have been waiting for this. Now when you look at it in Betaflight it is simply all of these options down here and as you can see on the screen these display depending on where you want to put them I've put them in the bottom left hand side but you now get the GPS longitude and latitude which we had before but you now have the other information including the home arrow we've got the distance setting we've got the home point direction as well and for me the arrow is just horizontal at the moment because I've only got it set um, on the bench, I haven't actually got it out and about, but it will now give you that home point arrow and distance from the home point if you're using a unit compatible with the GPS. Now, another new feature that DJI have added is a flashing prompt on the goggles when either the remote controller's signal or the ear unit signal gets weak. Now, I have tested this, and what you actually get on the ear unit low signal is you get a little flashing drone in the bottom left-hand corner that tells you that the signal is getting low. Now, this isn't too distracting, but it is something to be aware of. Now, I've seen one or two comments on this already of people saying, is this going to distract you in flight, especially if it's coming up all the time, depending on what the threat threshold is however I don't see it being a big issue but it is a bit more of a prompt so you'll go oh look I do need to do something about this because the signal is getting low now as far as I'm aware you can't turn this off at the moment it is permanent but it is something that DJI have added 
Now, next is they've added the menu option to choose between enable recording after unlocking the flight controller. They've added the menu option to choose to turn off the low battery alarm on the goggles, which is a big one. That's a, a low battery noise because that has annoyed a few people. Um, they've also added something called added support for Caddx Nebula camera. Now, I don't know anything about this. I've been given no information at all. At the moment, obviously, we've only got the one camera, which comes from DJI, but clearly there is going to be others. It would be really good to have another camera come that is more like a GoPro in the recording quality, but also have that digital output as well. It would be a fantastic addition to have if DJI allowed that to come. Something from like Cadex as a third party would be the ideal opportunity to do it, but it will be interesting to see what this one actually brings. Now, the next one is a massive one for analog users and the guys who've got a bay on the front who've been using it with analog, and that is they finally added the ability to properly adjust the screen size and positioning in analog, but they're also now showing you the battery level of the goggles in the bottom corner as well. Now, the reason for this was in analog, you never used to get this info. And what it meant was you could actually totally drain your goggles lipo and not have any warning that the battery was going flat because the noise, warning noise didn't work and there was no on volt screen voltage display either. So that has now been added too. Now, they have said that there's a couple of uh, fixes is issued as well for blurred from frozen screen when using the Cadex Vista when unlocking. Fixed an issue with the operation was delayed on a remote controller when using it with a simulator and they fixed an issue with the PADs weren't saving when you were using it with the goggles. Now as I did mention you will need to update all parts of the system on this when you're doing it and do make sure that it does have plenty of airflow. And that is pretty much it for this update. Now, I've actually not been able to fly this update yet because my remote controller is broken. If you saw my other video where I took it apart to show you how to change the stick mode, you'd have also seen that I ended up actually breaking it. Now, I'm not going to be able to get it repaired. Unfortunately, I am going to have to order a replacement. I'm trying to build up funds at the moment to be able to do that. So I haven't actually been able to fly this yet. Stuck in lockdown as well has pretty much stopped me flying anyway. But I, as we are heading towards summer, I do need to get this remote controller sorted and I have been trying to source a cable anywhere I could but unfortunately I can't so it's left me in a bit of a sticky position. Now if you'd like to support me in replacing this remote or if you'd just like to support the channel in general there are links to the DJI FPV gear in the description which are affiliate links with DJI but there are also a link to be able to donate to the channel as well so if you'd like to do that please do check that out. Please put in the comments what you think about this update. As I said, the real big ones is that HDMI output for guys. But again, not everyone is going to be spending £600 or $600 plus on a smart controller to be able to get the HDMI output. Whilst we would all love it to be able to compatible over HDMI C, uh, sorry, USB-C that we have on the goggles here and now, and if ever, that isn't available. Finally, the big analog updates as well alongside the OSD information. And those alone pretty much finish off this system. I can't really think now of anything else that's holding the FPV system back. Really now we'd like to see the price start coming down on certain things like the ear units. I think the goggles pricing is very good as it is. I think the ear unit pricing and camera pricing could come down a little bit just to allow you to get more units on your other aircraft. It would be fantastic to see another set of goggles as well with analog built in. One thing that DJI have proved with this is there is still a massive hunger for analog out there for flying your little tiny whoops and your other aircraft like that. So again, it would be fantastic to see a version of these goggles with analog but also have cheaper ear units along the way as well. Now, with regard to this new camera from Cadex, I don't have any information, but as soon as I do, I will share that with you guys as well. That's it for this video. Please do hit that subscribe button. Also hit the little bell next to it as well. Thank you for watching, and I will release another video again soon.